Welcome to class today, geometry students, on this beautiful Monday morning, the 7th. Hope you guys had a good weekend. You did pretty well on your tests, so um, that's good news for you. By the way, uh, you may as well pause the video now if Mr. Harmon, uh, who, by the way, does a great job of supervising the class, as in terms of getting papers to you and and uh, all the information to you that I give him. But um, he, if he has not passed out the papers to you, pause the video now and ask him for your papers because we are going to go over your test, okay? I'm going to continue on assuming you have the test, but if you don't, pause the video and get your papers. Anyways, hope you had a good weekend. Hope you're ready to learn. Today's lesson is pretty easy. We're starting chapter four, a brand new chapter, and usually the first couple lessons in a new chapter are quite often easy, and this is no exception. You'll find today's math pretty simple. Um, so we have a lot of notes because we're going to go over the quiz and make announcements and take notes. And the homework assignment, um, you'll still have homework, but it will not take you that long. Um, and I think you'll do fine. First of all, we will have a quiz this Friday. And if I understand correctly, that should be the last grade of the nine weeks. Okay, I'm going to make, I think, or if, if not, I'll put it to you this way. There will not be another quiz or test after this one right here on this nine weeks. So make it a good one, okay? All right, so quiz this Friday. Uh, sorry about that and uh, you owe me nothing to turn in. You had no homework over the weekend. Uh, Martin, you owed me an assignment, and you did turn that in, so we're totally good. I think everybody is caught up with everything, which is really, really good. So congratulations for that. Um, let's go over the test, okay? Everybody get your tests out. You're welcome to show others or keep them covered up, whatever you want to do. Let me say right now, I did not go over any of the fill in the blank. I mean, excuse me, I'm not right now going to go over any of the fill in the blanks, nor am I going to go over any of the list out the four ways or the four things we know about angles or the six ways to prove lines are parallel. All of that is in your notes, every single bit of it listed out for you. So there are some things I will do for you, but there are other things, if I do those things for you, I'm just teaching you to be lazy. So there is no reason you cannot find your own mistakes on the words that you missed on those. So having said that, we're only going to go over the problems now that students missed on the test. So please get out your tests, and here we go. Uh, some of you did miss number 14, so let's take a look at number 14. Are you ready? Please pay attention. Notice here in the directions it says P is perpendicular to Q. Do you see it? I'm circling it for you. P is perpendicular to Q. Now, the only thing that concerns me, I'm not sure if you're watching this on a big screen. Uh, I might want to make this a little bigger. Uh, let's see here. There we go. And it's not working, is it? Because some of the things aren't moving. Okay, we'll just uh, can that idea and we'll just forget it. Okay, um, notice right here on your test, it says P is perpendicular to Q. Now, if P is perpendicular to Q, that means this line here, P, is perpendicular to Q. That means I have a right angle right here, a right angle. So that means this angle here with an X and this angle here with a 40 have to add up to 90. Well, the only thing X can be then, students, is 50 because 50 plus 40 is 90. Okay, all right, moving on. Let's take a look now at numbers 15 and 16. See if we can spread this one out a little bit. All right, there we go. Numbers 15 and 16. Um, the direction said, find the measures of angles 1 and 2. Lines that look parallel are parallel. So, here we go. We have a parallel, a line here and a line here, and they're parallel. And we have an angle here, here, and here. Now, first of all, let's go back to what we learned a long time ago. Vertical angles are congruent. So, whenever you have, sorry about that, whenever you have um, two lines that intersect like this, that means this angle here is congruent with this angle here. And this angle here is congruent to this angle over here, okay? And so with that in mind, here I've got a line intersecting a line. So that tells me angle 2 and this angle right here are vertical angles. So right away I know angle 2 is 40 degrees. I mean, they are vertical angles, okay? So angle 2 is 40 degrees. Now, there we go. Now, this angle here that's 40 degrees and this angle here that's called angle 1, do you remember what they're called? They're called same side interior angles or consecutive interior angles. 
And when two lines are parallel, cut by a transverse, transversal that forms these two angles, they're not congruent, they're supplementary. That means they have to add up to 180. So if this angle is 40, then I simply, simply take 180 and subtract 40, and I get 140 degrees. So angle number one is 140 degrees. All right, number 16. Now, first of all, this angle here that's 40 degrees right here, and this angle one are what we call alternate exterior angles. Alternate exterior angles. And when two lines are parallel cut by a transversal, alternate exterior angles are congruent. So this angle number one right here is really 40 degrees. Now, you've also learned in the past, whenever you have a straight line like this, with a ray or a line coming off of it, the straight line's 180. That means these two angles here, this angle here, and this angle here, they have to add up to 180. They have to. So this angle right here would have to be 140, because 140 plus 40 is 180. So angle 2 is 140. All right. All right, numbers 17, 18, and 19. I'm going to grab a quick drink of water. The direction stated to tell how you knew the lines were parallel. All right, now, this angle here and this angle here are called corresponding angles. So we would say corresponding angles. And some of you just stopped right there. And, and I'm, I'm not sure how much I took off for that, but it's corresponding angles are congruent. You got to tell me, I mean, you got to tell me the whole reason. How do you know that A is parallel to B? Because the corresponding angles are congruent. All right, look at this. How do I know that A is, I think I said congruent, I mean parallel, sorry. How do I know that A is parallel to B? Well, these two angles here are called consecutive interior angles or same side interior angles. And whenever these two angles here are supplementary, that means they add up to 180, then we know that these two lines are parallel. So I would say consecutive interior angles are supplementary. It's that easy. And then this one here, guys, we learned it's one of our six ways to prove that two lines are parallel. Um, if two lines are perpendicular to the same line. Let's call this line C. A is perpendicular to C. B is perpendicular to C. So A and B are perpendicular to the same line. If two lines, like A and B, are perpendicular to the same line, in this case C, then A and B are parallel. Okay, moving on. No one missed 20, so we're not going to worry about that, but some of you did miss 21. Now, look, um, we know that this right here and this right here, these two angles, are same side interior angles. Excuse me for yawning, or in other words, they are consecutive interior angles. And remember, when two lines are parallel, cut by a transversal, in such a way, or excuse me, when that happens, the consecutive interior angles are not congruent. That's what some of you did. You went like this. You said 3x plus 28 equals 5x. They're not congruent, students. Absolutely not. They're supplementary. So we take 3x plus 28 plus 5x. We add both angles together, and they should equal 180. Now we combine like terms. So 3x and 5x is 8x plus 28 equals 180. Now subtract 28 from both sides and you're left with 152, I believe. Is that correct? Uh, let's see. Uh, no, that's not correct. Yeah. And then we divide by 8 and we get 19. 19. So x equals 19. Okay? So um, those are the ones you all missed on the test. Hopefully that's a help to you. You're welcome to keep these tests. I have no problem with that. Um, I give different tests every year, so that's not a big deal to me. Grab your notebooks, put your tests away, put your homework away that was passed out to you. Let's get ready to take some notes, and let's see what we can learn today. All right, here we go.
Okay, we are going to be starting a chapter, it's chapter number four, that is about types of triangles and certain characteristics that they have. Okay, you don't have to write that down, I'm just telling you what chapter four is all about. The heading today that I would like you to write down is called classifying triangles. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to classify triangles. And by the way, you'll find it really easy. You've heard of these terms before. Right triangles, obtuse triangles, uh, acute triangles, scalene triangles, etc., etc. Excuse me again for yawning. So I'd like you to write down classifying triangles, lesson 4.1. And I think it's always very helpful, that's my opinion to write the date down and the date today is the 7th so if you want to write that down 10 07 13 so we're going to look today at classifying triangles lesson 4.1 now you do need to know this so write this down you will be quizzed on this fill in the blank triangle a figure that is formed by three segments joining three non-collinear points and, and think about that it makes total sense here's what it's saying it's saying that no three points line up together in a straight line. Sure, these two do, but not the third one. Sure, these two do here, but not the third one. And sure, these two line up in a straight line, those two points, but not the third one. And so this is the definition of figure formed by three segments joining three non-collinear points. Definition of a triangle. We are going, you don't have to write this down, we are going to classify triangles today, listen to this, based on their sides and based on their angles. By the way, I could classify you students different ways. I could classify you male and female. I could say there's um, two males, two females. I could classify you as in volleyball players. Uh, one volleyball player and three non-volleyball volleyball players. I could classify you as soccer players. A zoo and Martin are soccer players. As far as I know, Jason and Jake are not. Um, I could classify you based on uh, your grades, based on whatever, many things, hair color, okay? And so there's more than one way to classify things. We're going to classify triangles today based on their sides and then based on their angles. We're going to start off looking at different types, are you ready? Based on their sides. Alright, so here we go. Write this down please in your notes or if you don't want to write this down then make note in your notes that on page 173 in your book we see triangles classified by their sides, their sides. An equal lateral triangle is when you have three congruent sides. That means if this side here is a five, then that means this side is a five, and it means this side has a length of five. All three sides have the same length, all three sides are congruent, thus we have an equal lateral triangle. Now an isosceles triangle has at least two congruent sides at least two so see how I have two tick marks here and two marks here that means this side is congruent to this side so we have an isosceles triangle two sides are congruent to each other now a scalene triangle is when you have no congruent sides that means this might be a two right here and this might be a three right here and this might be a four right here okay um, None of the sides have the same length. All three sides are different, okay? Now, I'm telling you, you're going to find today's notes really, really easy. Oh, and by the way, I want to pause right now and talk to you about your test. I just thought of this because I'm going to give you some bonus points in a second. I went back and listened to the video, and I know, guys, I'm sorry if I confused you. I would never try to mislead you for a million dollars. Well, maybe for a million dollars. I'm kidding. But um, I did not say, I, I went back and listened to it, and you're welcome to. It's still, it's still listed there. On, on the account, I didn't say I'll give you three points on your test. I said you have not been given bonus points in your bonus point account for a while. If you'll do the homework, I'll give you three three bonus points in your account. Remember, you never get bonus points on a test by what you have in your account. Never. Those are only for quizzes. 
you get bonus points for your test by doing the review sheet, okay? And three of you did, and one of you did not do the review sheet. So that's how you get the bonus points. So if you put eight bonus points on your test, go ahead and put three of those back in your account, okay? When I said I'd give you three bonus points in your account, those always go for quizzes, okay? And in a second, I'm going to give you a chance to earn some more bonus points. All right. Um, if you don't want to write these triangles down, you don't have to. You're more than welcome just to write down page 173, and that's where we're going to find these problems. Let's classify these triangles by their sides. Oh, are you ready? Let's start with letter A. Take some good notes on this. Follow along, please. Here we go. All right. Notice on this triangle here, my pen's not working. There we go. All, f all three sides have a measurement of four. Now, that means all three sides are congruent. So what do we call that? We call that an equilateral triangle. Equilateral triangle. All right, letter B. This triangle here has sides of two, three, and four. All the sides are different. None of them are congruent. We call that a scalene, scalene triangle, okay? Then over here, notice we have two sides that are congruent, not the third side, just these two here. They're both six, okay? Whenever two sides of a triangle are congruent, we call that an isosceles triangle. Now you need to memorize these and be familiar with them, okay? All right, I'm going to give you a half a bonus point for each one that you get right. You're welcome to turn your books if you want to. Um, page 173, I'm not sure if they're at the bottom or the top. My book is not open. However, if you'll turn to page 173, you should see these three triangles at the top or the bottom or the middle. I want you to go ahead, and of course don't look at the answers, but I want you to go ahead and um, list, excuse me, name these three triangles based on their sides. Okay, go ahead and classify them. Um, pause the video and do that now, and then turn it back on when you're done and see how you did. Okay, hopefully you're finished now. Um, if you're not, please do not turn the video back on until you're finished. Let's take a look at this triangle here. Notice we have two sides that are congruent, and so we call that an isosceles triangle, okay? Isosceles triangle. I'm not sure why I put black marks over those if the answers aren't there, but isosceles, okay? Now let's take a look at number two. Notice all three sides are congruent, so we call this an equilateral triangle, equilateral triangle. And then lastly, number three here, notice all the sides are different, 10, 6, and 7. So we call that a scalene triangle because none of the sides are congruent, okay? So what we just did is we classified triangles by their sides. Now let's go ahead and learn to classify triangles based on their angles. Did you notice that all the classifications we just did were based on the sides? You should have noticed that. Now we're going to look at different types of triangles based on their angles, on their angles. So you can copy this down or you can make note in your notes that on page 174 you will see these four examples. All right, so let's take a look at these very quickly. All right, notice in this triangle here, all three angles are congruent. One mark, one mark, one mark. When all three angles are congruent in a triangle, we call that an equiangular triangle. Equiangular triangle, okay? Now, when we have an, a, a triangle that has three acute angles, now don't forget, an acute angle is an angle that's less than 90, so we'll pretend we've got a 30 here and uh, let's see, a 70 here and an 80 here, okay? Well, notice all three of those angles are less than 90, so all three angles are acute. Thus, when all three angles are acute, we call the triangle an acute triangle. Again, we're looking at the angles, not the sides. Notice when just one angle is 90 degrees, just one angle is 90 degrees, we call that a right triangle. And then notice when one angle is bigger than 90, and this angle here is definitely bigger than 90. We'll say it's, I don't know, 100 degrees. Um, when just one angle in the triangle is obtuse, obtuse means larger than 90, then we have an obtuse triangle. Okay? So with that in mind, let's practice a couple of these, and I'll give you a couple more bonus point opportunities. And to be honest with you, 
um, the video will then be done. So not a very, not as long as I thought it was going to be. Okay, you're welcome to write these examples down in your notes, or you can just write down, make note that's on page 174, and let's take some really good notes. Here we go. Classify the triangle by its angles and by its sides, both. We're going to do both. So let's start by looking at the angles. First of all, in letter A here, we have angles that are 40, 70, and 70. Now all three angles are acute. There's no 90 degree angle, no obtuse angle. All three angles are acute. So we know it's an acute triangle. But then notice what else that we know here. Notice that we have two sides that are congruent. This side here has one slash, and this side here has one slash. So now looking at the sides, whenever a triangle has two congruent sides, we call that an isosceles triangle. So what do we call this? We call this an acute isosceles triangle. Acute isosceles triangle. Okay, let's try this one here. Let's classify this triangle by its angles and its sides. Sides, excuse me. So this is a right angle right here. See that? Well, if a triangle has one right angle, we know that we call it a right triangle. So we're going to write the word right. And then look at your sides. All three sides are non-congruent. They're different. Well, we call that a scalene triangle, right? We just learned that about five minutes ago. So this triangle is called a right scalene triangle. A right scalene triangle. Now, let's come over here to letter C. I notice one angle is obtuse. It's larger than 90. So I know that based on the angles, I have an obtuse triangle. And now look at the sides. Looks like all three sides are different. 6.4, 5.89. 9. All three sides are different. So once again, that's called a scalene triangle. So this triangle is called an obtuse scalene triangle. Obtuse scalene triangle. Now, I would like you to, of course, it's really blurry here, but if you'll look in your books, uh, page 174, numbers 4 through 6. I'm not sure. I think it's at the bottom of the page. Sorry for yawning again, guys. I apologize. A little tired tonight. I hope that I'm not annoying you doing that. I'm sorry. Um, so if you'll turn to page 174 and look at the bottom, numbers 4, 5, and 6, you'll see these problems. And it's really hard to look at the screen because these are pretty blurry. So you might want to use your books. But I'll give you half a bonus point for each one that you get right. You're going to classify the triangle by its angles and its sides, both. So all of these triangles should have two words in their names, like right scalene or obtuse, um, I don't know, obtuse isosceles or something like that, okay? So at this time, go ahead and pause the video, label these three triangles, and then when you're done, turn the video back on, and we'll see how you did. Okay, my book, it looks like in my book, I don't have my book open, but on the screen it looks like it's 72, 72, and 36. Let's see if that's right. 144, yeah, that's right. Okay, so here we go. First of all, for a letter, or number four here, number four, we notice that we have all acute angles. So you're definitely going to call this an acute triangle. And then notice we have two sides congruent. This side here has one slash, and this side here has one slash. We call that an isosceles triangle. I'm going to write that underneath acute just to save space. So there we go. We have an acute isosceles triangle. You had to get both of those right, both of those words, to get a half a bonus point. Okay, let's come over here and look at the angles. We have a 60, a 70, and a 50. Notice all three angles are acute, so we have an acute triangle. And then notice also all three sides are different. All three sides have a different measurement, and we call that a scalene triangle. So. Number five is an acute scalene triangle. And then last but not least, notice we have an obtuse angle here, 120. And if you have one obtuse angle, then you have an obtuse triangle. So we know we have an obtuse triangle. And now look, there's one slash here for this side, one slash here for this side. So we know this side here is congruent to this side here. And whenever two sides of a triangle are congruent, we call that an isosceles triangle. So the name of this triangle, based on its angles and sides, is called an obtuse isosceles triangle. Obtuse isosceles triangle. Okay? So I hope this makes sense. I hope you're getting the bonus points. I hope you paid attention. And I hope that my yawns have not been too distracting. This is your homework. It is due tomorrow. Your homework is due tomorrow.
as in Tuesday, as when you walk in the door, okay? Page 176, 11 through 29 all. Please do all of those. And there is a help video, of course, Geometry 4.1 homework. There is a help video there for you to get help on, so please feel free to take advantage of that. Have a good Monday, and I will talk to you guys on Tuesday. Don't forget quiz on Friday.